All right, guys, let's calibrate this uh, scope that's in front of us. So what we'll do is we'll walk through the procedure that's in front of you in your lab. Um, and so we'll just go one by one. We'll go through the whole calibration and we'll see what little of these knobs are going to screw you up uh, on any of your labs. So what we want to do first, it says attach the scope probe connector to the BNC connector of channel one. Push and rotate to ensure you have a good connection. So we're going to take this guy right here. Right? This is basically just a coax cable. In the center, you can see that there's the, the coax in the center. And so the outside is going to make contact with this portion right here. And then that inner portion of the BNC connector is going to go into and make contact with the coax connector of the actual scope. So we're going to look at channel one. So there is a, uh, you can see here that there's a set place where you can put it in. A little bit out of focus there, sorry. Um, so this just slides in with the knob that's on top, press it, turn it, and it's going to lock into place. Okay, got to make sure that it's engaged fully in order to make good contact. Uh, plug in your oscilloscope and turn it on. You'd be amazed at uh, how many people forget to turn on the scope. I don't see anything. Uh, why don't we turn it on? So let's press this button and turn this bad boy on. Okay, and you can see that it's slowly coming in. Hopefully you can see that as well as I can. Depends on the frame um, per second on the camera here. So plug in the oscilloscope, turn it on. Attach the probe to tip to the calibration two volt peak to peak knob at the bottom left hand side of your screen. So this bad boy is going to just connect in like this. So we're just going to Set it there and you can see there that now we've got um, a signal coming through on the scope. Uh, turn your selector switch for the oscilloscope to channel one. So I'm on channel one right now. That's where I have the, the connector connected into, but obviously if I go to channel two, you know, I've got nothing, right? Dual is going to be a combination of those guys and the addition of those guys. So we don't want to do that. We just want to keep things simple and look at channel one. Beauty. Okay, next one. Adjust your volts per division to one volt per division so you can see a deviation between your peak lines. Okay, so this connect, this calibration connector that we've connected up to is two volts peak to peak at a thousand uh, hertz. So what we need to do now is change the volts per division. Again, we're on channel one, so changing this knob would not make any sense whatsoever. But changing this guy that corresponds to channel one will change the value that's on the screen. So you can see that as I change this value, now we're off the screen and we're going to keep it at one volt per division. That way, if we have two volts uh, peak to peak, then we'll be able to see the whole waveform on the screen. Okay, next thing, uh, turn the variable volts uh, division completely clockwise. So this definitely will screw you up uh, during your lab. You'll do the, help, the whole calibration and you will forget to um, set this knob right here. You can see that if this knob is in the wrong position, you'll have various different outputs depending on its position. So make sure that it is turned completely clockwise. It actually clicks into place there to say that you're calibrated there. Otherwise, your voltage is going to be a lot less than your partner's next to you. Okay, so fully clockwise and we're set there. Okay, next thing, adjust your time per division until you see one full cycle. So at this point, um, you can see that there's a number of different cycles coming through here. Um, so by changing this guy, the time for division, that's going to change. See right now all we have is just a quick little blip coming across. As we change it, 20 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, 5. And as we change this, we slowly get to be able to see the waveform there. So now we can see the square wave. Uh, output and now we've got a couple of cycles there that we can see if obviously if we do this a little bit too much Then we're not going to see the full cycle. So Let's see that one looks pretty good there. It's at uh, 0.2 milliseconds Okay, next thing turn off all the magnification settings and ensure that ensure that the switch on the probe is set to one times so on the actual probe this switch here has a number of different uh, positions. It's got a reference switch, it's got times 10, 
and then times one. So if the value is uh, too small to see on the screen, you can always multiply it by 10 by changing that switch there. But right now, let's keep it simple and let's keep it in times one. And it looks like that's the setting that we had it on before. Here's the times 10, right? So you can see that the waveform has now been squished and then the reference is just gonna give us an, a straight line. So let's go back to the times one setting. Next thing, set the trigger button to auto and adjust the trigger knob so that the wave is not scattered. So <clears throat> this is our trigger over here. And so what we wanna do is there's a, a button right here that's uh, normal if it's up and then auto if it's pressed in. So we're gonna keep that pressed in to have an auto trigger. And we're gonna adjust the, the trigger to you can see here that if everything's all over the map here, then it's not stopping the waveform at one point. So we're just going to bring in the trigger and then it'll all of a sudden just kind of lock in there. Beauty. So now if we keep going, again, we have a messed up waveform, but let's slowly bring her back and then we can see um, a nice clean waveform in front of us. Next step, step number 10. Next, set the channel one to ground and then use your vertical adjustment to line up the ground uh, with your x-axis. So this will also screw up. If you have this button here pressed for ground, then it creates a straight line. So we don't see the waveform that we're supposed to. Uh, but what we can do is we can take this vertical positioning here and we can bring this up and line it up on the actual x-axis. Okay. There is a trace rotation here, so um, if the, 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 the waveform is off just a little bit, then you can use the a little set screwdriver there and change it so it lines up completely with the x-axis. Okay, so we've done uh, that. We've lined it up with the x-axis, pressed the ground button again. You should see a square waveform of uh, one volt peak, or two volts peak to peak. Beauty. So right now we're on one volt per division. Each of these solid lines is now a division and that division now corresponds to one volt. Okay, so this was my reference here on the x-axis and looking up there, I have one volt peak. This one says two volts peak to peak. Well, obviously if this is one volt here and this is another volt, then we have two volts peak to peak. Again, the reference is on the x-axis there. Excellent. Okay. Uh, by pressing the, the next one it says is by pressing the AC button, you'll effectively block the DC component of the wave on the screen. Okay. So you can do that to see your waveform. Now I just pumped it up uh, so that the bottom portion is on the, uh, is right on the X axis there. Right. By pressing the DC button, you'll be able to see both the AC and the DC components of the wave. So that's what we want to see. We want to see that uh, fluctuating around the x-axis there. Okay, so leave it on DC and keep the DC button pressed in. Next, use your horizontal adjustment to put the beginning of the cycle to the very left of the uh, left-hand side of the screen. So you can see here that, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but a portion of my waveform is not actually uh, visible. So the next thing that I can do is I can do the horizontal positioning. So this is my vertical positioning for channel one. Horizontal positioning for either channel is right here. So as soon as I change this, it moves the entire waveform over. So it could be that you just have a small portion or it could be that you have it over here. Um, well, that's a little bit messed up. So let's move it over so that the waveform starts. You can see there, there's the beginning of a new waveform. So I can just set this guy up right there. And then everything looks good. I can see a full cycle there, right? being the negative portion. Uh, you can't see it on the camera, but it just traces up, then comes over to do the positive portion, portion, so that's one cycle, and then comes down and starts that cycle again. Excellent. So we've got the vertical and the horizontal adjustment. Everything's set up. We're seeing a good waveform there. Um, we don't have the waveform off the screen. We've reduced it down to one volt. So we have two volts peak to peak. Each of these is one volt. Uh, and then again, um, each subsequent small hash tag there is going to be um, you know, a fifth of that voltage there. Um, then we change the time per division. So again, if you don't see the full waveform, 
change the time for division until you can actually see a decent waveform there. Okay. Once you adjust it too much, then it goes funky and you're not able to see the actual waveform, and that's where we were before. Um, what else did we talk about? We talked about the, the ground. If the ground is pressed, then um, you will just see a straight line. We use that for a calibration. Uh, ACDC will skew your values as well. If this guy is not clicked in, then the voltage is a lot less, and that actually threw off my trigger there. The voltage is a lot less than uh, what it was before. Even there, right? everything looks cool, but it's not at the appropriate value. So make sure that that is clicked in as well. Uh, aside from that, uh, make sure that you're on channel one rather than on uh, the two signals coming in. And I think you're good to go. Everything looks calibrated. So it says uh, step number 16, fist pump your lab partner. Nice job. Right on. So now we're all calibrated. You can go back to this video uh, anytime to calibrate your, uh, your scope. There's Wi-Fi in the, in the lab. So bring out your phones, check out this video, and just go step to step uh, if you've lost your initial lab that walks you through the calibration of the scope.